Okay, take two. I will do this part again, by the way, because I accidentally muted my microphone for like 20 minutes when I was about to sneeze, but I didn't sneeze. But then I pressed space in order to advance the dialogue and then also toggled the mute on OBS because it was the last thing I clicked on. So <laughs> one of the biggest fears of recording anything is accidentally muting yourself and then that's just wasted footage. I mean, it's not too bad. It was like 20 minutes, but still, I gotta do this part again. It's a little awkward, but let's do it. All right, let's see. <clears throat> hey, Nanako, I'm done. You can come out hiding. I think this is, part, this is where we just, uh, we, we, we went upstairs. We shouted, you know, that Nanako's a bonehead to basically check if you could hear any groaning from the second floor, I guess. I could, Ikeda, you idiot. You made me wait almost a million years. That long you ever had a mental breakdown, not bad at all. So, could you hear me shout? Shout? Oh, you mentioned that. I completely forgot. Jeesh. Well, since you totally forgot about it, I'll just have to go back one more time. Yeah, no, no, just kidding. I remember what you told me. Mm, are you sure? So, you hear my voice over there? Yeah, because Neniko has a photographic memory, so there's no way she would have forgotten. I don't think I did, probably. I'm telling the truth. Would I lie to you? Don't leave me alone anymore, please. If you leave me again, I'll call you Sen Demon Scumbag Ikuda for the rest of your life. But whatever, anyway, I believe you. But if you didn't hear me, then it's kind of strange. Because Alex and I both could hear Sir Raymond's moans. That would mean that the moaning didn't come from the room but came from the hallway instead, maybe? No, I checked the hallway as soon as I heard the moaning. There's nothing unusual there. I didn't hear the sound of a door closing. That moaning sound had to come from the another room. And I'm just looking at OB just to make sure I'm I'm, I'm not being muted, right? I'm, because I'm pressing space. Spa the space bar is cursed in this playthrough for some reason. It always just like, like it, it does an action that I don't intend it for it to be, you know? Should I press enter instead? Maybe enter is better. Uh, but even then it might do, some, do something else. I don't know. Anyway, I guess we just click. I, I just get tired of clicking for some reason. I don't know. But anyway, then which room did it come from? I think that I came from the room next to this one. The room next to this one. I have a bad feeling about this. I joined the party. If I break into the room next to ours, I may be able to find some evidence there. I knew it. Don't go. Stop leaving, leaving me behind. Come with me then. Uh, to be honest, I don't like that either. Wait, I have a bad feeling you're going to leave me again. I guess I just have to come with you. Because you won't be able to do anything without me. That's very helpful, really. Let's have that smug look. All right. Time to break in the room. That I'm surprised we didn't break in before, actually. You know, there's a lot of rooms that maybe uh, could have reviewed more things. But uh, are you going to pick that lock? Is water wet? <laughs> Not bad, eh? For someone so useless. I guess you always have a career in burglary you can fall back on. Hmm. Alright, all clear. I don't see anyone hiding. Oh. Why don't you just turn on the lights? It's almost identical to our room. The only thing that's different is this painting. Nedico, do you notice anything? Doesn't matter how small. Do I notice anything? Nothing in particular, to be honest. Well, the sheets are a bit misaligned, but only a tiny bit. The sheets, huh? I don't think it's a big deal. No, I think it is. A handkerchief with initials on it. Was it underneath the bed? The initials D R. Dan Raymond. So this was Sir Raymond's handkerchief. It doesn't have any dust on it. I also don't think the killer left there, uh, left it there on purpose. This is important evidence that proves that Sir Raymond was in this room recently. So Sir Raymond was attacked here. But isn't that strange? It's certainly strange. So the killer called Sir Raymond, or so, so the killer called Sir Raymond to come all the way to the room next to yours, and went. They went out of the way to move him to a different room to kill him. No matter how you think about it, isn't it strange? And here and here. It's certainly a mystery. Why did they tell him to come to this room? And why did they move him to a different room later? What do you think? I really don't know. Let's see. I might know why they moved Sir Raymond to the other room. When the killer murdered Sir Raymond, they would have known about my real background. So they must have thought they, it would be too risky to mutilate him in the room next to mine. That's why they moved him to a different room first. You did they really have to mutilate him? I mean, they wanted to mutilate him so badly, even if it would ma mean that they would be discovered. Oh, what a sick person. They likely harbored a grudge against him. Anyway, even this will not explain why the body was moved. I do not, I do not, do not, donut? No. I do not understand why the secret meeting with Sir Raymond took place in this room. There would be only disadvantages of having a secret meeting here. It's as if it had to be this room for, for a reason. The reason why it had to be this room. 
For instance, perhaps there's a hidden passageway in this room. That would explain why Sir Raymond was caught off guard. But in that case, there had to be a passageway that the killer knew about, but Sir Raymond didn't. Is it possible there's a hidden passage here that even the administrator of this mansion didn't even know about? It's certainly a little bit unlikely. Or did they manage to surprise him another way? Another way? How then? For example... Well, by the way, I did this before, <laughs> technically, without, uh, uh, you know, recording my voice accidentally. Um, so I already know the answer. It's funny though, actually all, technically all these answers are wrong, by the way. Uh, if you pick this option, he says that uh, only the guests of the staff, or not the guests, I keep saying that wrong. Only the staff of the mansion would not be dangerous to Sir Raymond, but we already established only the guests would be the killers, so this is not the correct answer. Uh, picking the lock is also not the answer because it would be very risky you know people would notice that would, they would be doing that um and sneaking through the window is also not the answer but technically it's how you progress it's a little strange but you know technically this is what you need to click on anyway because if you click on the other ones it just ends up uh, it just loops back to the same bad ending that we saw before same exact dialogue really so nothing new there if you're curious but uh did they sneak into the window these windows have no locks so they could sneak it from the outside from the window there's a terrible wind blowing constantly. Is they sneak in by using a rope? It would be quite difficult or even impossible. Well, it certainly would be difficult, but I don't think it would be impossible. For a trained professional killer, that is. Well, if you put it like that, you may be right. Just by thinking about the possibilities, old memories just come back into my mind. And I feel dizzy. Let's stop talking about this. I almost thought that I solved the case, though. How could the killer have come up with such a strange murder method? There must have been a simpler way. Certainly. Or maybe the killer was inspired by something that had happened in the past. An isolated island in the sea. Strange iron doors. A warm bridge, a burnt corpse. Constantly blowing winds. A transparent killer and a mysterious creature. Wait. By Jove, I think I've got it. The killer's modus operandi. Operandi? Operandi? Was it modus operandi? Anyway. What? Really? Tell me. If what I'm thinking is right, only this person could be the killer which we'll find out next time on the next episode of dragon ball z now i'm the killer is yes who hang on i heard something behind the door of course you know of course we're not going to reveal that uh too soon what what are you talking about your timing totally sucks are you leading me on who's there what are you doing there whoa was there really someone there let it go let's go after them Whoa, what the? Why are you guys coming out of there? You gave me a fright. Akira, did you see anyone running past you right now? What? I just saw Jacob. Jacob? Darn, I have a bad feeling about this. Wait, hold up. Did something happen again? Hey, wait! Hey, what's going on? Jacob just ran past me. So Jacob was listening in on us from there. What's he up to? Rio, stand back. I'm opening the door. Okay. So yeah, I guess uh, this entire time Jacob was listening in on us. And that's why I guess, um, you know, he goes back to his room and gets killed, right? Because sometimes we... Well, I guess we'll see. But anyway, the iron door is no longer blocked. Looks like he's one step ahead of us. Yeah, we also block the door technically, but we got him over here. Jacob. Jacob's in the middle of the bridge. And I can see Vincent and Abby blocking the way. Huh? What's he doing? Then I go, duck. Vincent's holding a gun. What a gun? Someone did the killer. After all, Jacob is shouting something at them, but the sound of the wind makes it difficult to make out what he's saying. The killer is. What? Does Jacob know who the killer is? Was he eavesdropping on us to learn information that could unmask the killer? Again, I kind of did this part already, so that's why I uh, jumped the gun too early. But yeah, I was going to say that the reason why he gets killed in the other bad endings is that while we were investigating, and he, I, I assume he heard everything. Um, we didn't get far enough to really make Jacob believe that he knew who the killer was, right? So he just went back to his room and got killed, I guess. But this time, he does. He actually probably figured out who the killer is, and that's why he ran away and is trying to negotiate, maybe, with the staff, with his life, I assume, somehow. But yeah, that's what happened. Please, because I have... Jacob and the other two appear to be negotiating, but I still can't hear what they're saying. Vincent and Abby don't appear to be very open to negotiations. I have a feeling something very bad is about to happen. Hey, what's going on there? Looks like everyone in the guest room building heard the commotion has come here. Ryu, Akira, Giselle, and Alex are all here. 
get away from the door. Vincent has a gun. He might shoot you. Stay out of his line of sight. Alright. But what the hell is going on? He's got his gun pointing at Jacob. What's going on? I think Jacob's trying to cut a deal with him. Well, that's just a guess though. And he's dead. <laughs> you know, either way, no matter what he does, it's destiny that the jerk ass character who's the jerk ass. Jerk ass? Is that a word? Jerk ass? You know, jerk asshole asshole jerk anyway you know the character nobody likes uh, he dies either way so nobody misses him looks like the negotiations have fallen apart what was that gunshot what happened tell me it's not a very pleasant sight don't look all right that was a headshot from the hip vincent appears to be an expert marksman yeah, he, he, he just shot from the hip you know he didn't even do iron sight my god he has like a million hours in counter strike there's a warning to the killer. You have 30 minutes. If you don't tell me the code by then, I will kill everyone without mercy. Vincent, what code do you want? Detective, outsiders shouldn't talk too much, or their lives will be cut short here. Whoa! I see Vincent's muzzle move in my direction and quickly take cover. Yeah. Too bad about Vincent. I really thought that, I don't know, for some reason I thought maybe he could be a potential ally. Or something, but no, he's just, just gonna be like, I'm just gonna be like, I'm, I'm gonna kill everybody. Oh, okay. So, as it turns out, you know, for some reason, I thought, yeah, he would be like maybe distinct from the staff and at least have different motivations, but no, he's just part of the staff as well. So, never mind that. Well, suddenly, the iron doors on both sides close, and the guest rooms in the main building are separated again. Uh, I believe, yeah, th okay, and this is when I noticed that I was muted. So, yeah, this is when. This is new again to me. Uh, I mean, let's just save here right? for fun. Why not? It'd be kind of weird on the VOD, I feel like. If you're going to be watching on the VOD, it'd be kind of weird where I suddenly turn into, like, a no-commentary playthrough. Which I've, you know, people have done before, I guess. I don't like to do no-commentary because it's kind of weird, you know? It's just kind of like, I'm just recording the game without any commentary. I don't know, this doesn't feel like... Uh, I'm adding anything, you know? I'm not adding any, any, any value to it. To like the game especially as a visual novel right it's just all story it's kind of like at that point you basically you know i mean you know i don't think pirating is like is the worst thing in the world in my opinion but it kind of depends right if it's like a story game especially a visual novel if you're just going to record without commentary at that point it's like you might as well just be stealing the game but <laughs> anyway whatever at least for me i like narrate everything you know which is like could be a good or a bad thing, you know, depending if that's what you want, but that's the that's the thing I do anyway, so I can like make the content a little bit different from just simply uh, you know, reading the visual novel and basically just not pay for the game, but you know. Well, we have 30 minutes. That's not a lot of time. There's no point in asking the killer to help for help now. I'll have to reveal their identity. Let's go back to my room. We can discuss what to do next there. How can you stay so calm after that? He said we only have 30 minutes. What is this code anyway? What do they want? Just calm down. Let me think. Let's go to my room and plan our next move there. Don't tell me you're gonna shoot yourself in the head and summon your persona. I'm not drunk enough to do that. Yet. Besides, if I had to shoot someone, I'd shoot the person who got in us into this mess in the first place. Alright, we're back here. Finally, uh, back together again. Time for the big reveal. Time to sell this once and for all. I should already know who the killer is. I do? Um, okay. Mm. I don't, mm. It's me, everybody. It's me. I'm the killer. <laughs> you know, actually, I do want to, like, pick the wrong thing first. I actually want to see what happens if I just pick the wrong thing. That'd be funny. It's me. I'm the killer. Yes. It's me. Hang on, am I still not quite certain? Darn, what the hell am I thinking? I've been over this several times already, so I don't know what to do. What? A blackout? No, <laughs> this is. Okay, I was assuming something. It's gonna be a bad ending. But I actually wanna see the bad ending. I hear something moving quickly in the dark, and before I realize it, I'm dead. And then I die. Yeah, okay. This seems to be the same. I try to defend myself, but I get stabbed in the chest. I finally spew out blood. The shadow repeatedly stabs me over and over. Ikeda! Ikeda! Mission failed. I think I can hear Nanako's cry from far away. Darn, how can I mess up at the last moment? 
Only one person could have been the killer. The answer was stare, uh, uh, staring me right in my face. Why did I... Okay. Uh, it seems to be the same ending, though. Yeah, it's just funny. <laughs> like, just... And then... You die. <laughs> it's like, it's like, whoops. You didn't choose the right thing. Whoops. Alright, well, let's get back to where we were. Uh, I couldn't say right before, but I can just get through. Let's see right here. I mean, just in case. In case I actually choose wrong again. I could choose something wrong again, but... Yeah, okay. Okay. Alright, let's think about this. It's not Ikuda, because obviously, unless we're like a really unreliable narrator, and like, it's us, right? We can't be the killer, you know? It's, it's kind of like a cop-out, right? If, if the main character is the killer this entire time somehow. <laughs> I feel like. But it probably happened a few times. In different stories. Um, it's not... It's not Akira. It makes no sense, right? Why would it be Akira? Um, I'm trying to think, like, well, let's think about this logically, because this is not Wizards now, so we don't have the phone call to think about, but we are thinking about the testimonies of everyone involved, and how they would have killed Thomas, and, hmm, how they would have killed Thomas, and Sir Remy in particular, like, how would they have killed both of them? Hmm. <laughs> Well, I don't know. It's hard to think about it, but I mean, yeah, I don't think it's Akira because I mean, she's just a small girl. I mean, that's not, you know, it isn't the case that she wouldn't be able to do it, but it's unlikely, right? It's just very unlikely that she would have been the one that killed everybody. She's a small girl um, for the most part. And why would she? Oh, yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is like, why would she be attacked with a snake, right? She was a victim, too. So unless she was in weird, like, gambit where she was pretending to be a victim as, as well, why would she risk her life being killed by the snake venom? So that's very unlikely to be her. Jacob is dead, I think. Yeah, he got shot. So it's not him. Why would the staff kill the guy who, you know, has, has the cold? So they need the cold. So that's why, you know. They need them alive, so why would they kill Jacob? Uh, Abigail is the staff, so obviously not. Uh, but again, they need the code, so they, she can't be the killer. Nenako is with us the entire time. Um, so it's just very unlikely to be her either. Unless she's been possessed by a demon somehow, but I don't think she really left her presence very often. So she really didn't have any opportunities to kill anyone. Uh, Giselle... I'll get back to, because actually that is my prime suspect. Thomas is dead. Aurora is Hatsune Miku, so she doesn't exist. Uh, Riel, we already confirmed she's a wizard, so we, I mean, unless she's also the killer, which is very unlikely, it, it would make no sense. Uh, why would they reveal that she's a wizard and also the killer? That'd be like really weird. Um, so I don't, I really don't think she is, because why would she collaborate, us, uh, collaborate with us in the first place to figure out who the killer is if she's also the killer, right? It makes no sense. So, it's not Riel. Uh, Alex? Hmm... I'm trying to think. Could it be Alex? Hmm... Well, unlikely because... Again, uh... I keep saying, I'm, I'm thinking he. I mean, you know, it's kind of the point, but also, it's supposed to be she. She is usually on the first floor, right? In the guest room. They wouldn't have access to the second floors Unless they know how to lockpick, but we haven't seen ev any evidence of that. And uh, they would need to like climb through with the window, maybe. I'm not sure yet, but that that was the default, you know, theory is that they climb through the window, right? But Alex wouldn't have uh, access to that in the first place, I don't think. I'm trying to think, Alex. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's Alex. I'm trying to think, like, Thomas. Thomas is, like, multiple options, technically. Like, whoever, like, like, was late to the dining room. Like, whoever, like, I don't know. Thomas left. I, I can't really remember the timeline for Thomas's death, to be honest. Like, whoever, like, maybe was late to the dining hall, they would, like, set up some kind of trap. Or maybe they left after Thomas left or something, or during the meal time, maybe. I don't remember anything about Alex, though. Uh, I mean, Vincent, obviously not. This is, again, just like Abigail, they kind of categorize the same way, so they're both staff, so therefore they're not the killer because they're looking for the code in the first place, so, you know, why would they be the killer? It makes no sense. Uh, so I'm trying to, like, maybe rule out Alex. Alex, Alex. I mean, she's pretty sure as well. I mean, just kind of like Akira, they're kind of like, they don't seem to be, like, uh, very strong, so... 
you know, it was established that Sir Raymond was like stabbed repeatedly and everything very violently. Like a, a kid doing that is just unlikely, though not impossible. Like, but uh, it's just unlikely. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know about Alex. Alex is a little suspicious, though. I mean, the only thing we reveal about them is that actually they're women, right? <laughs> but other than that, other than that embarrassing fact, uh, otherwise they just kind of like, you know. Or she kind of just kind of like uh, walks around the mansion on their own, looking for information themselves, and that makes it a little suspicious as well because we only interact with them very often. But I don't know. Not sure about that. So Alex is a maybe only because I'm not really sure. But Giselle again. Remember when I said how like Giselle was kind of like maybe sacrificing Akira to try to kill her, and also Ikeda and Neniko with the snake. It seemed very suspicious that she was so co conveniently called away. Um, right? By Vincent, or she said it was Vincent, and also she was looking for an antidote, quote unquote, but she wasn't really doing that, I guess. Uh, and she it definitely took her sweet time getting the axe to like open the door and everything. I don't know. She might have been lying to us and was the one actually throwing the snake inside. Maybe. I'm not sure. But that, that assumes that she was also the person that did that. You know, that's assuming the killer is also the one that tried to kill Akira, though. I'm not sure about that, though. Could have also be just been one of the staff too, but hmm. but then again, again, the staff wouldn't do that because the staff wants to make sure that the killer gives up the code before they kill them. So very unlikely the staff was the one that uh, put the snake in the room, right? So it has to be Giselle in that case, which is kind of disappointing because I do like Giselle. I kind of wish we learned more about her. She seems a very cool character. But, you know, she seems to be the one, actually, when I think about it. The only one, she seems like she's, she's an adult, right? Um, she was brought out as Akira's assistant, kind of like, because Akira likes her, but uh, we don't really know the details of, about that. Uh, Giselle seems very, like, calm and everything. But I don't know what her background is, but I'm assuming she has a very similar background to real, actually. You know, kind of like a badass maybe military background i don't know but she seems very calm for the most part in, in most situations um so the so i don't know maybe that kind of fits the bill right a very calm person that does everything very rationally that kind of sounds like a hitman to me so uh yeah maybe she's actually the assassin she seems the most assassin like of everyone else in this group again maybe alex Maybe Akira, Akira doesn't seem like, she seems very innocent, you know, she doesn't seem very like a person that's hiding much. So she might not know who Giselle actually is, right? Hmm. Yeah, Alex again, but Alex is like short, <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't seem very strong, so doesn't seem like a person that can like just assassinate people very easily. So yeah, my money's on Giselle. I think my money's on Giselle. There's probably something about Alex that would have made her uh, impossible to be the killer, but I don't really remember, to be honest. I think. I mean, Alex was the last one to leave, right? Or the last one to go into the dining hall and everything, but... Hmm. I don't know. I'm assuming it's Giselle. Because remember, there's one opportunity where Giselle could have killed Thomas was when she was looking for that notebook, right? She mentioned she did leave a little bit, and we just assumed that it was all just a she goes, notebook, that's all, because Akira collaborated with that. But that's assuming Giselle's telling the truth. She could be live Akira and also manipulating her to like hiding or covering her up and everything, right? Yeah, she seems the most suspicious. She seems to be like missing in the most convenient time somehow. And wasn't there like a, a, a very early hint very on actually? Um, there was a conversation, I think, when we we're talking to Akira and then Giselle just suddenly showed up and we were like surprised because we didn't notice her presence. Maybe it's because she's used to doing that because she's an assassin and she's really good at sneaking around. She has like 100 stealth if she was in a open world role playing game, <laughs> you know, she would have a lot of stealth. So I think it's just so I could be wrong, but that's my most likely answer. Is that my final answer? Yes. Bum, 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 bum. Da -da -da -da, or something i don't know i can't i don't know what's the melody of that you know who wants to be a millionaire theme <laughs> anyway uh that's right the only one who could be the killer is rio i need you to cooperate with me all right huh yes of course how can i help it's only a teeny tiny thing huh 
Hey, hey, is this some kind of joke? Why are you tying me up? Hey, my hands hurt. Okay, now we're gonna do some rope play. No, I'm um, Rio. You're the killer, aren't you? I mean, this is not the option we chose, but no, since we the player knows that, you know, I'm assuming this is a bluff. What? What? Huh? No way. Huh. So she's the killer. That's right. First of all, Real and Alex were the only pe two people who had the opportunity to set a trap on the bridge that could kill Thomas. So this allowed me to narrow the list of suspects down to two people. Then there's the murderer, Sir Raymond. I always wonder why exactly Sir Raymond was caught off guard. But in the end, it doesn't matter. The killer only needed to unlock the door and sneak into the room where the meeting was about to be held. Did she unlock the door? How would she do that? Actually, she's really an undercover agent who sneak onto this island. She's highly trained. Not only can she pick locks, but her assassination skills are also first class. But how did she kill Thomas? Did you find out how? We don't need to anymore. We just asked to kill herself. That's right. Come on, Ryo, give up already. Ikeda? What are you thinking? Do you think I'm the killer? You idiot, someone else is the killer. What? She just became a totally different person. Do you mean she's been acting this whole time? She became, you know, it's like the opposite of Sundere, you know? Except it's Dere Sun, or whatever. Anyway, it appears that Ikeda's reason was, was right. Ikeda, don't listen to her. She's trying to get into your head. Real killers always say things like that. Quit fooling around. You regret this. You're all going to be killed by the real killer. Neneko, keep an eye on Riel for me. What? Me? I think oh, there are others here who could do a better job. Everyone else, please come with me. I have an idea I want to discuss with the three of you. An idea? What are we going to do? Torture her until she talks? Close, but no cigar. We're going to reveal the killer's identity. What? You're making zero sense right now, Ikeda. Yeah. Alright, I've got her. Ta-da! Alright, it was a rose! This entire time. Ah. Huh. You... Calm down, Ikeda. Ryo isn't the killer. What do you mean? Um... I'm not so. I'm not. I'm so not following what's going on here. Well, you see, this is a gambit where we pretend that the other person is the killer, but actually we attack the real killer. Uh, judging from the murders, it was obvious that the killer is a well-trained professional. It would have been difficult to neutralize them if they'd been on their guard. That's why I had to play a trick on them. I was confused when Ikeda tried to tie me up, but then he whispered his little plan to my ear. The rope was loosely tied, so I could escape and sneak up under cell. Looks like your plan worked, Ikeda. You could have told me in advance. I would start when Ryo suddenly stood up. But Ikeda, you didn't need to tell everyone that I'm an undercover agent. I had to. If I had done that, it wouldn't be able to fool a killer. I needed a good reason to incriminate you and distract the real killer. So revealing your true identity was my best bet. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> you know, it's like... It, we lose uh, reputation points with uh, Ryo though. Minus 10. Affinity. What? You're making a mistake. I'm not a killer, and I didn't kill anyone. You're pretty calm. You're pretty calm, aren't you, Giselle Reed? Anyone else would lose her composure in such a situation. This calmness. She has the composure of an assassin. Of course, you know, it's like you're so calm, you must be guilty. <laughs> but, I mean, it's probably true, though, but, you know. But, Ikita, do you have any concrete evidence that proves she's the killer? Please don't tell me this is just a hunch. Of course, I'll explain everything. Let me tell you how Sir Raymond and Thomas were murdered and why I'm certain that Giselle is the killer. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I'm thinking, yeah, again, the, the whole snake thing, she was away for a long time, right? She was looking for a antidote, quote unquote, but she might have been doing something to Sir Raymond that entire time and probably killing him or something. I don't know. Uh, also, Thomas as well. I mean, Thomas probably was a trap, right? She, she might have set up some kind of trap and killed him. I think I know what it might be, but I guess we'll see. Anyway. Yeah, why am I so certain that you're those First of all, let's talk about the murder of Sir Raymond. Sir Raymond's estimated time of death was around 2 a.m. on the day we all arrived on the island. Sir Raymond didn't show up in the dining hall. Our surmise from a mysterious moaning that Alex and I had heard both, uh, both heard that Sir Raymond was most likely tied up in the room next to mine at noon on the first day. As evidence of this, I found Sir Raymond's handkerchief in the room next to mine. In other words, the killer had used this room as a secret meeting place. I don't know why I said that weird. Here. As a secret meeting place where they restrained Sir Raymond. Wait a minute. Why did they go out of their way to set up a meeting in that specific room? Right next to yours. Isn't that strange? You're right. I was wondering about that as well. Laurie and capturing Sir Raymond there. 
The killer must have used some kind of ruse to catch Sir Raymond's attention. So I thought about how everyone's rooms are allocated. There's something strange about it. If the killer had chosen the allocation of the rooms, that allocation must mean something. How the rooms are allocated? I never thought of that. As I said before, all windows can be opened from the outside as well. There's no need to be afraid of intruders on this island. The killer took advantage of that. She snuck into the room through the window before Sir Raymond arrived. Sir Raymond let the guard his, his guard down because he had Abby sweep the room first. After Abby checked and told him the room was empty, Sir Raymond entered with his guard down. He was restrained by the killer who had sneaked into the room earlier. Wait, but there are always strong winds on the island. It shouldn't be so easy to sneak in from outside. The only way that can be done is by upsealing with a rope. Upsealing? Upsealing? I don't know what upsealing is, but I assume using a rope, I guess. But, you know. Did the killer really manage to do that? Hmm. I guess I'll have to ask Nedico in her photographic memory about this. What? Me? Yes. You were about to fall out of your window around the same time that Sir Raymond was captured. Do you remember everything you saw then? Was there something like a rope hanging outside of this room? Uh, forcing me to remember that terrible moment. How cruel. I really don't want to, but I don't have a choice. Mm. Uh, a rope was definitely hanging, hanging along the wall, but it was the same color as the wall, so I couldn't see it well. I'm uh, falling, falling! You're still here with us. You're safe. I'm never doing this ever again. It's just—it's funny. Like you just really, really live the moment. You can do that. I, I don't know if that's like literally how photographic memory works, but you know, I guess that's her ability. She literally relive moments in her in her life, kind of like save states. You'll save a state and load it anytime she wants. Uh, I see. So it's possible that the killer used a rope to sneak into the room. Wait, in that case, the killer would have been staying directly above the vacant room where Sir Raymond was captured. But that was Jacob's room. How could Giselle have been killed? Or, yeah, well, not killed, rather. How could Giselle have been the killer? Jacob was definitely a suspect, too, but then the following occurred to me. What is it? The wind. It's so strong that it can make you fall down if you open the window even a little bit. The wind on this island is blowing very strongly from right to left. If you upsell, you'll be swept to the left. The killer knew this from experience. This is why she didn't pick the room directly above it. She picked the room that was further, to the right. Ah oh, yes, gotta use the wind to your advantage, actually. Kinda like golf, you know? <sighs> so she took the wind into account. Certainly, it'd be difficult to get down to the room right below you if there was always such a strong wind blowing. Considering the strength of that wind, she could have exited her bathroom window then entered the room to the left underneath her. Wait a minute, but she could perhaps also manage to do some of the right uh, room directly above it, right? Indeed. So the list of suspects narrowed down to either Jacob or Giselle. This is only a guess, but I think the killer knew how to descend from one room to another from past experience. But, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> past experience? Anyway, now let's consider the next case, Thomas's murder. Thanks to Nenikos and Alex's testimonies, I found out that the bridge was warm at the time. So what happened there? Jacob used the words, transparent killer. The victim was killed around noon and Thomas himself didn't notice anything. So what I arrive at is burning ethanol. Ethanol? The killer poured ethanol onto the bridge and then set it on fire. Speaking of ethanol, there's certainly a lot of rectified spirit in the wine cellar. Rectified spirit is a liquor with a strength of 95 to 96 degrees. It's almost pure ethanol. Wait a minute. Even if the bridge was set on fire, nothing happened to me when I walked over the bridge. How could Giselle be the killer? I don't think she had a chance to set it on fire. Giselle set on fire when she went back to get her notebook. The bridge was already on fire when you crossed it. How is that even possible? The murder was committed at midday when the sun was high. It's difficult to see periods of the burning in full sunlight. Because of that, you probably didn't notice the fire. This is what a transparent killer really means. Okay, I didn't really notice. I didn't really think of that, but... Hmm. But yeah, I knew that it had something to do with the... Yeah the alcohol that's the only way you could have done it i was also thinking like maybe you could use a uh, like a molotov cocktail or something you can throw it right and then close the iron door somehow but i mean i don't know anyway also we all know that the drainage is terrible on that bridge that's no remain on the bridge for a long time it only appeared to be a puddle but in that case why was thomas the one who was burning not i we both crossed the bridge there were several factors that led to thomas's death the first is that Thomas's clothes were made of hemp and flammable. But there's one more thing that makes this a well-thought-out murder method. And what's that? The iron doors. Why was it so important that the killer 
Our fourth killer closed the iron doors even though she would risk exposing herself. In fact, the iron doors played an essential part in Thomas's murder. Why were they essential? Uh, you mean the wheels? Exactly. Thomas had to stop on the bridge to turn the wheel. This took some time, and after a while, the fire ignited his suit. I see. In my case, I opened the door from the guest room building side when I crossed the bridge, so I didn't, I didn't catch fire. To think that I could end up just like Thomas. That is enough to convince me. Some methanol can't cause such serious burns. How do you explain that? It would be easy to imagine if you were in Thomas's shoes. As he was unturning the wheel, he suddenly felt the heat underneath his uh, feet. Surprised by the fire, Thomas panicked and tried to extinguish the fire. That's when he saw the, that vase in the corridor. The vase? Wait, did the killer anticipate Thomas's behavior and put more ethanol into the vase? How could they have foreseen that? It will explain the severity of his burns though. Thomas wanted to extinguish the fire with the water in the vase but burned himself to death instead. Am I right? Is this what happened? Giselle? It certainly is an amusing theory. But all sounds like speculation to me. Phoenix, right? <laughs> you know, this is just, it just reminds me of Ace Attorney. But anyway, perhaps the murders were carried out as you described, but you can't tie me to any of them. The testimony about the rope hanging outside the guest room building was vague, and anyone could have set the bridge on fire. She appears to be right. The testimony about the rope is vague at best, but I can't conclude that Giselle was the one who poured the ethanol to the bridge. Ah, uh, I want to grow into a dark cave now. Besides, if Giselle really is the killer, she might have had an accomplice. Giselle is Akira's attendant, so Akira might have helped her in one way or another. What do you have to say about this? What the hell? Stop talking nonsense. I'm telling you that neither Giselle nor I are the killer. The killer has to be someone else. What do you think, Ikeda? Do you have any concrete evidence? Of course. I guess I'll have to go back to the beginning. Why did the killer use such a strange method to kill someone in the first place? Well, you see, they want a silent assassin in the, in the mission rating, you know? They had, they had to do it in very specific ways in order to get the best score for the mission. Um, it's strange if you think about it. There are better and easier ways to kill someone, aren't there? There's one explanation. The killer already knew what they would do before coming here. Already knew, which means they knew the victims. That's right. Jacob once told me that the Thomas's death was similar to something he had seen before, and that the killer had to be a woman. For some reason, he wouldn't explain himself further. My guess is that the killer had witnessed something in the past that was similar to the way Thomas was murdered, or they may even have experienced it. It's possible that these murders were revenge murders. If that's the case, then what uh, Jacob said would make a lot of sense. It also explains why he didn't want to talk about the murder method. I see. But do you have any proof that Giselle survived and escaped from this island? Is there any evidence that proves that Akira is an accomplice? We can find all the answers by examining what Akira has said before. I have to censor this again. We have to do a flashback back to when they were naked. Uh, anyway. Uh, I gotta like, remember there's two scenes I gotta censor. Anyway, the first thing that stood out to me was that Giselle didn't want to take a bath with Akira. Perhaps she thought it would be appropriate as she is Akira's attendant after all. However, there could be another reason. Giselle didn't want to take a bath with Akira because she wanted to hide the burns on her body. What, what are you talking about? There's no way! Akira also said that when we found Thomas's body, Giselle kept her away from the door. It seems like a casual act, but also takes on a completely different meaning when considering everything else. When Akira and Giselle got to the bridge, there was still a fire burning on it. Giselle realized this, so she quickly moved Akira away from the door. My guess is right, there should be old burn scars on Giselle's legs, and new burn marks as well. If what you said was right, Akira could have been her accomplice? If Akira had been her accomplice, she wouldn't have talked about those things. Hmm. Alex, could I ask you to tear Giselle's stockings to check her legs again? I, 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 look, it's like the second time we're like ripping stockings. I'm like... On, on someone. I don't know. It's a little weird. Anyway, my hands are kind of full right now. Me? All right. I'm sorry, Giselle. Rip, rip. Whoa, there really are burn scars. As well as recent scars. I concur. Those are burn marks. Old scars as well as recent burns. That proves it then. Well, you know, it's still kind of circumstantial, but you know. It doesn't really, it's not really concrete evidence, it's just kind of a coincidence, you know, but anyway. This would really hold in the in the real court of law, but that doesn't matter, I guess. Giselle. No. Killer. 
we finally admit your crimes? <laughs> no way. Tell me that he's lying, Giselle! Can't believe it. I didn't think you would be able to discover the truth with so little evidence. Sandy Kida looks like I've underestimated you. You know, you're as powerful as that spiky-haired lawyer from the blue suit. You can, like, just, like, you know, figure out the killer just from very circumstantial evidence. Everyone gasps as Giselle's tone of voice suddenly changes. Giselle, are you really a survivor from this island? Why did you kill them? Was it for revenge? All for revenge. Such a lust! You won't be able to understand. Even if I explain it to you. Everything I had. Everything was taken away by Shira and Nagasu Island. The people I killed were horrible men who have had it coming for a very long time. I have no regrets ending their lives. My only regret that I, is that I couldn't kill Jake and Rutland with my own hands. Giselle, what do the people from the mansion want from you? What is your bargaining chip? Something I was given by someone when I had to leave everything behind here. My trump card for revenge. However, the people from the mansion want to use it to control the world. Control the world? Please give it to us, Giselle. No. My revenge is almost complete. I won't allow you to get in my way. I don't think you quite understand the situation you're in. I'm not as meek as you thought, and I'll get what I need by any means. And now you're talking just like me. We have very similar personalities, actually. I, I don't know what voice to give Giselle because, uh, you know, it's just kind of very similar, actually. I don't know. And now you're talking just like me. Aurora. What? What was that shrieking sound? Uh-oh. Ah. Uh. Uh-oh. Hmm. What the? That's that creature. Why is it here? And why does she yell Aurora? Does that mean... Dot dot dot? You know? She yells she yell Aurora. I don't know. Anyway. Hmm. Eek. It's the demon of Shirinagasu Island. Also, did I skip it? I don't know. I feel like I skipped that a lot, but... No, I don't think... Yeah, she, she just said, erg. Anyway. Uh, no, Aurora. You can't eat them now. Get me out of here. You're not going anywhere. Don't move. Don't any of you, uh, you dare move a muscle. Otherwise, you're all going to die. What do you mean? I have a parting gift for you. Handle it with care. If you have miraculous, uh, miraculous, I can't speak. If you have miraculous knowledge and amazing luck, you might be able to make it through this alive. Giselle, listen to me. Are you really the killer? So our relationship was just a lie. Giselle! <laughs> yes, it was all just a lie. Everything. I'm just a liar. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It might be the case. I'm guessing, you know, her backstory is like, yeah. Okay, so she was one of the survivors from the island. And she was looking uh, to, you know, infiltrate Akira's family, I assume. But I guess she didn't take into account that Akira would come here, actually, as a representative. But that's what happened, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Anyway. Eek. Oh, wait. Giselle grabs Akira and the creature holds them both as it disappears out of the window. I run to the window and look outside, and I can only see the back of the creature running toward the main building. It got away. It must have already made it to the main building. Well, that's impossible. Jumping across cliffs that high will carry two people. But that was the monster. The demon is here on Nagasu Island. And it seems like, yeah, Giselle just has that as her pet, you know? But why did I just why did Giselle call that creature Aurora? That's the name of the girl I saw. Darn, what's going on? Um, I don't want to spoil this moment, but the bag Giselle left behind. I have a bad feeling about this. Uh, should we just leave it there? She left us with a warning and also left her bag here. Let's take a look inside. Is it a bomb? It's definitely possible. But nobody would be stupid enough to try to defuse a bomb at a time like this. Alex, Nedico, get out of here now. I think Neneko has been paralyzed with fear. I am a bit nauseous and my knees are shaking as well. This isn't a joke. I have lost all strength in my legs. I can't stand. That monster was too much for me. I'm sorry. Jeez, alright. I'll carry you. The phone is ringing at a time like this? You know, just ignore it. We have to get out of here right now. It's just trying to slow us down. No. Leaving here might be a mistake. I should pick up the phone. Who is this? Ikita, don't go outside. Oh, oh, that's Akira, okay. Huh? Akira, is that you? Are you alright? There's explosive outside! It's been armed! Don't go outside! Calm down, what happened to Giselle? What explosive? Giselle, she left me behind. But enough about her, there's an explosive! 
Okay. Actually, I didn't notice. Did she? I actually didn't notice that uh, she was taken as well. Was she taken by Giselle? Hmm. Okay. G uh, Giselle grabbed Akira. Okay. And they both. I thought they meant like Giselle and the creature. You know, as in like Giselle was riding on the creature like a horse, and that's what they meant by both. I kind of. I, I kind of misread that. She actually did grab Akira. Okay. I mean, yeah. Even when it's been revealed that she's the killer, I guess she still takes Akira with her. I don't know, well, I don't know, I don't know if uh, they actually do have maybe, you know, maybe she does care a little bit about Akira, or maybe she's just using Akira, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, Giselle, she left me behind, but enough of it, there's an explosive. Giselle planned explosive on that iron door, so don't open it! On the iron door, are you sure? It was like a square box. Giselle told me that if anyone opens the door, it'll explode! Akira, where are you now? In the dining hall. I'm calling from there. Ikeda, I'm scared. What am I supposed to do now? I don't know what to do. It's okay, don't worry. I'm gonna take care of, the, take care of this right away, and after that I'll come to get you. For now, turn off the lights and hide in the shadows. Uh, that's a bad idea considering the monster is like, you know, let's see in the dark. But I guess it'll be unlikely. I don't know. I mean, again, I don't know how much Akira, or rather, uh, Giselle care. I don't know how much uh, Giselle cares about Akira. But she didn't kill her right away, so I assume she doesn't want to, you know, let the monster kill her. But anyway. Wait, don't hang out, please, I'm scared. Talking on the phone is too dangerous. Just hide, okay? Ikeda, she's in a very dangerous situation. If Akira is right, an explosive has been planted on the iron door. Knowing how well trained Giselle is, we'll have to deal with the bomb here first. Rail, do you have any experience with bomb dis disposal? Well, I have studied bomb making fundamentals. I might be able to handle it. I also have some tools that can be used for dismantling bombs, but they were originally designed for breaking things, so don't expect too much from them. Good enough for me. Neneko, you should go to Akira's room with Alex. If this bomb explodes, the room the farthest away from here may be safe. No, I'll stay here to help. I don't need someone who becomes paralyzed as soon as she sees a monster. Be a good girl and move as far away from here as you can. We're supposed to be together. Besides, if you die, how can the rest of us survive? Don't forget that I'm your partner. Geesh, you're making me feel guilty. All right, I'll let you help me. I'm gonna make another save just in case because I really feel like we're gonna be, you know, disarming a bomb. By the way, um, can I leave? Yeah, can I leave? I, I don't care about any of you. Can I just go? Are you kidding me, Alex? You're a man, aren't you? You need to show that you're less afraid than this little girl. Say I would help me. Oh, it's ironic considering that, you know, Alex. Yeah. Actually, I'm a girl. You know, I'm not. I'm just gonna reveal that real quick. It doesn't matter at this point. What a stupid joke. I'll make you dismantle the bomb first if you say something stupid like that. I, I wasn't joking. <laughs> it looks like our fates are now bound together. Alright, I have everything I need. Let's take care of this bomb and save again. You know, something I've noticed, by the way, yeah, I've noticed that for some reason my text is... Like, the font for my text is, like, different from what I see from uh, the store page, you know? I, and I took a sneak, uh, you know, uh, a sneak peek, I guess. Um, no spoilers, just, like, I want to see what other... If other people were like playing this game in the past, you know, like let's plays and all that, and how they, I mean, especially how if they censored the fan service scene or not. <laughs> um, anyway, and see if they got banned. Uh, that's the reason why I, you know, looked around. But I've noticed that yeah, the font for their like text box is different from mine. I'm not sure. Maybe I don't. I don't have the font installed or something. I'm not sure how that works. I'm not sure what engine this game uses either. So I don't know how that works. But it seems like my text is like weird. You know, it's like using very like weird like default text. Anyway. Alright, don't be nervous. Overthinking will just stress me out. I have to open this bag to start dismantling it. What should I do? Can I open it slowly? There might be several booby traps. Opening the bag could set off the first of them. If an optical sensor has been installed, it may explode if it senses light. I'll have to see what I'm doing, though. I'll have to open the bag. The, uh, the bag is shaped rather oddly. It doesn't look like a normal bag. You're right, it's square. It doesn't have any patterns, and it looks different than any ordinary bag. Hey, I think it's a thermal bag made by Super Thermals. It cuts off the outside airflow, so it can keep things cold for quite a long time. I read good reviews about this online. You can, get, you can buy it on Amazon. A thermal bag, huh? It's definitely something Giselle would use. She must have chosen this bag for a reason. Maybe there's a temperature sensor inside? That could be the case. If there really is a temperature sensor, it could detect certain temperature swings. The room temperature is much lower right now because the window has been broken. If you open the bag right now, it may result in an explosion. What should we do then? Should we turn up the heater and raise the room temperature? We don't know what temperature this bag is, is, so it might be better to deactivate the sensor itself instead. The temperature sensor is probably a long, rod-shaped piece of metal. 
You might be able to cut the wires that extend from it. Cut it? What me? To tell you the truth, I've never dismantled the bomb before. I feel embarrassed telling you this, but my hands are trembling. You can probably do much do this much more steadily than I can. Alright. I'll unzip the bag first. Don't let any air flow into it. Okay, unzipped. Ikeda, don't you understand the meaning of being careful? I thought I was about to be blown to bits. Hey, you're still one piece. No big deal. Next up is the temperature sensor. Alright? If there's really one, you'll have to about five seconds to cut his wires after you open the bag. Has to be done quickly. Don't touch anything except for the sensor wiring, alright? A vibration detector may be triggered otherwise. There we go. <laughs> a metal bar sensor. Get the wire extending from it. Don't touch anything else. Alright, piece of cake, I hope. Okay, get to work then. Um, I'm gonna touch this. Haha. <laughs> 